Welcome back to the bubble, ladies and gentlemen, and Cossacks 3. Today we will be reviewing a game that I played quite a while ago, actually. I really need to, um... I really need to quicken up a bit on releasing the replay commentaries. This game is from uh, January this year, pretty late uh, January. But I did write a comment in it to check my teammates' build. So that's something that I'm going to be very interested in looking at. We can start with going through the uh, different players and the different nations. Starting off with me in purple, playing as Denmark. Then we go to my teammate. We are going to check a bit. Um, KZ Becca. We'll just call him Becca. And KZ, most likely he's uh, gilded up. So that usually means that he's a pretty experienced player. So it's going to be a lot of fun to check for sure. Playing as Saxony in bright blue and then we go down to the bottom right corner where we have frank in blue playing as saxony and last but not least we have berkut in red playing as denmark so one denmark and saxony versus one denmark and saxony i will try to jump between the players a little bit but most of my focus will be on becca so we are going to go up to him and then let's start the game. Okay. Starting off with one town hall and one mill. Okay. That's interesting, actually. He took 12 town hall and six. Uh, they are in rows of three, I guess, or rows of four. Rows of three at the beginning. Or rows of two, whatever. But he took uh, the bigger part to build the town hall and that timing was insane getting the storehouse um right before the mill and then of course getting the market up and running while he's also queuing his second town hall burning the storehouse because he only wanted it to be able to build the market now then most likely he's going to put down the real one in a better place than that and he's also sending out peasants to scout the peasants have a lot better visibility than the um, military units do. So he gets a lot of visibility from that. Just searching for his mines. He's already found three of them. Pretty fortunate in the positioning of the mines. If we just go over to me real quickly. He already has his third town hall. And then he's waiting for the blacksmith to be up and running. I think that's a good timing to try to have actually. I usually just set everyone to town hall. Then half to mill and half to storehouse blacksmith. But he has that timing locked down for sure. How's it going with the mines? Still hasn't found the fourth one. But he's searching for it with his peasant. If we go over to me, I also have three town halls. I have my first barrack. Feels like I completely bum fumbled some trade to be able to get... Yeah, I haven't sold any gold. That's something that I learned later down the line, I guess. To start selling gold as well to be able to afford my... Um, second barracks and then also of course be much quicker to go up to my academy i've also only found two of my gold mines they weren't as close to the base as they were for becca but then we can go down to berkut and see how he's doing two town halls all working on the academy and has both the barracks as well as a stable so stronger military build than i did in the beginning most likely he spent um, instead of putting the wood and stone into one town hall one more town hall, he uses it to get the other barrack. He is also very efficient at finding his gold mines, already building on all four. Then we can go over to Frank at the bottom right, see how he's doing. Three town halls, two barracks, pretty standard stuff. Working on the academy, but he is a lot later on the stable. And I guess not building the town hall, that's 6.3k resources in stone and wood, I think. That he then say that uh, Berkut then saved and got two barracks and a stable up and running instead. So he will have uh, some more cavalry than we do, but he will also have fewer peasants than we do and pretty a little bit weaker economy, I think. Also going on the Diplo Center. Uh, something that I'm trying to do later now, not in this game, but generally, is go up with the stables um, first instead of going for the Diplo Center this early because... You have a lot of time to recruit units, and this is going to be expensive in gold, and that's going to rack up. Let's see. Okay. 
point wise Berkut is actually in the lead but let's go back up to um to Becca and see how he or she is doing three town halls very very tightly packed civilization build here very tightly packed infrastructure that's very good I did do my best but I mean this could have been done a lot better for show and I've still there I have my third mine a fourth mine is really way off but I'm very very far behind on building on my mines that's not good for me while um while Becca has already found all four very close to his base compared to my gold mine being all the way over here you need to be a bit fortunate as well as to where your mines get positioned you don't want them to be up here front and uh, close to your enemies you absolutely don't want that so in that sense um Becca had a pretty good positioning but Frank also seems to be doing a great job point-wise. 118. I think the mines help out a lot with getting points. Has found all of the gold mines. I'm also going to zoom out just a smidge. So we can get more visibility over what's happening. And he's sending his units to, my, to the front side of his base. Towards my border. Of course, that's very reasonable to do. Berkut has a pretty good hillside advantage here one here and one here so we will be able to have a pretty good range shooting over the palisade that's going to be great for him let's go back to becca i if i wrote a comment to check my teammates build then that's what i'm actually going to try to do he has his first stable building his second and only one food upgrade and the wood cutting upgrade so he hasn't gotten the other ones yet of course everyone most likely got the first harvesting upgrade from the mill and got second upgrade on the gold mine. Second, second, second. Only one my gold mine left that he hasn't upgraded. But he does have the resources for it. So he could do it any moment now. Any second he wants. I wonder... And it's too bad that I don't think we can see... The player upgrades in uh, this replay view. That would have been sick if we were able to do that. And he's also a bit later on Diplo Center, so he's going with two stables before getting that one up. So in that sense, it's kind of like um, a receipt that the strategy I'm doing now, focusing on two stables instead of going for the Diplo Center, that feels like a reasonable way, uh, reasonable, reasonable road to take. Also, working on double palisades here, six minutes left. I'm usually waiting with my palisades until the very, very last second, with, which might not be the most efficient thing. And also, he has an opening up here towards my base. I wonder if he wants us to try to, to build together, I guess, so I can start building from here and not having to build up here. I don't think that I was savvy enough or smart enough there he there he uh, palisaded that part as well. Okay. Point wise, how's it going? Frank is doing good. Frank, uh, but we are both actually in the lead over Berkut and uh, Frank right now. But Frank is getting up there, and uh, now I've actually stopped doing archers at the very beginning of the game. And instead I'm doing Sish Kozak so that I can do some harassment. And I'm going to try to mass up quite a bit of them actually. Starting with 20 but I have some more in the recruitment slot. And also working on the second stable. So in this game I haven't quite figured it out that I want to go for two stables. Before um, going with the Diplo Center. When it comes to upgrading my gold mines I have one upgraded. Where? There. So I have two gold mines upgraded to um, the second level. So I'm going to be quite far behind when it comes to gold production in general. But also because, of course, I didn't get the upgrades quite in time. And um, Becca now has his third stables also working on the artillery. And I think that's why I wanted to check his build. Um, because he might have gotten quite a lot of artillery for his army. And that's something that I've never quite gotten used to using in quick matches, because this is of course a quick match, 15 minute peace time, 5k starting resources, uh, no capturing peasants and artillery allowed. So, he did get the first upgrade to decrease the cost, that's actually a good idea, because look at the cost of cannons, 300 iron, 300 gold, that racks up, stacks up 
quite quickly to be very, very, very expensive. But look at the gold income. That's crazy. He hasn't gotten any of his gold mines up to level 4 or level 3 yet, though. Although he could afford it, at least with one of them. Three idle mines as well. One iron, two coal. Okay. Two minutes and 40 seconds left of peace time. Let's take a look at the armies that we have here. If we start off with him... 178, 50, 134, go down to um, Berkut. Right, he has his cavalry down here. Only 37, no, 50 as well. So they are pretty even, although Berkut has a lot more round shears because he started recruiting them very, very quickly. He also has, if we look at the amount of peasants he has in gold mines, he only has 40, while, yeah, Becca actually has 40 as well, but the... Uh, income is a bit lower uh, than it is for Berkut because he has so many round shears. But they're not that expensive to mass up, actually, if you compare to the uh, Mercenary Dragoons, for example. They become very, very expensive, and I think the Grenadiers are that as well. Berkut is also working on his second level of Palisade, while Frank only has one towards me, and then it's wide open here, and I hopefully... I'm going to be clever enough to use that. We only have one minute left of peace time, so let's actually take a look at Frank's army comp as well. Quite a lot of dragoons, quite a lot of musketeers, very, very few round shears. 122. And how many do I have? 134. Yeah, so a little bit more, but not that much actually. But uh, Frank actually has four stables up and running, so that's going to be huge for him stopped with the uh, mercenary recruitment because he ran out of population space but now he was quick enough to put down the dwellings and he's using a, using a tactic that i started using later down the line as well building around where i have my peasants so they don't have to walk too far although i would have most likely taken some peasants from the wood and then built one ring of dwellings here and then sent them back to um wood production okay peace time is up doesn't look like any one of us have gone up to the 18th century yet, so we can get the Montgolfier, so we don't have the visibility. Becca doesn't put his units into formations, because when we have artillery, you don't want to put your units into formations, because the artillery becomes so much more efficient at killing your stuff. Let's see, where is his... There we have the blacksmith. He has gotten the harness for the horses, so he does have a lot faster recruitment. Only gotten the damage upgrade and one level of defense. That's a very cost-efficient um, way to go about it. And where are... I have three stables, so I'm a bit low on stables. Only got one defense upgrade and then maxed out on damage. I have not yet maxed out my damage upgrades on my Musketeers, and I did do the mis mistake of upgrading their defense as well, which is costing a lot of unnecessary gold, because you have the round shears for melee defense, so you don't need those upgrades on your ranged troops. And uh, Becca is moving out right away. I'm sorry if I'm mixing Berkut and Becca or anything like that. Trying to keep an eye on things, but he's working on... The corner. Let's actually take a look at... Okay, completely missed that. Can I see another corner piece here? There we have one. So that is 1,500. And so are the these palisades. It's important to look at, like, what construction... How much HP do the constructions have? Because I do recall that... That the... Um, gates have less yes they have less so it's much quicker to cut down um a gatehouse than it is cutting down a palisade but now he's moving in i would actually prefer Berkut's position here and he should have just put his units up on the wall and then use the range advantage but also i'm sending in my cossacks to try to harass a little bit soaking up some damage and take some attention away from the um, ranged troops of Bekas. And we did actually manage to get through here. It all comes down to how good of a name are the cannons going to get. Because if they can get a shot in here in the Dragoon Blob. Then it's pretty much over for uh, Berkut. I'm also starting to send my Dragoons over. Because I saw that Frank sent, uh, sent reinforcements. 
So I wanted to intercept them as much as possible. But now... Becca is inside Berkut's base. And here we are. He doesn't have any troops left, so I don't know how long he's going to stay in the game for. And now Frank is moving out towards me. And I do have my infantry, most of my armies actually left, although I did throw um, my dragoons over to the left side. So now I only have a bunch of musketeers. Let's see, there we go. A bunch of musketeers and some more dragoons, but only 37. And a whole bunch of round shears. No artillery. So here was something that Beck actually did very well. Let's see his upgrade on the artillery. Only got one cost decrease decrease upgrade. Might be worth it to get um, another one. But okay, he only went with one upgrade to decrease uh, the cost. And still he massed out quite a few of them. Actually has 10 and then he's captured 3 from uh, Berkut. And Berkut hasn't started uh, blowing up his buildings yet, so he hasn't surrendered quite yet. And now I'm actually moving out with my troops, because... Let's see, what do I see? I actually don't see Frank's massive army, but I did decide to uh, try to move down and try to harass his economy either way. And in the meantime, Berkut's actually trying to rebuild in Frank's base... That's something that I very rarely do. I'm such a coward, do you want to say that? I'm too lazy to start rebuilding, but I have started trying to do that a little bit more lately because if you have a good teammate, you can really turn it around. But now Frank actually saw that my army came in, but he does not have enough troops to, um, to deny me this entrance to the base. And now... Now I'm guessing... No. Uh, Berkut is still playing, but we did manage, I did manage to get in, but I'm losing a lot of troops up here. I'm way too spread out, and my round shears don't fall, don't really serve their purpose, because you want them to be in front of your ranged troops so they can soak up all the, all the uh, fire from the muskets. So now I'm losing all of my real damage dealers. Because they are not protected by the round shears. All my round shears are down here, a hundred of them. And just leaving my ranged troops to die. I did set my spawning point a bit earlier, I think. Or I just uh, selected all my military units and had them march in. But Becca is coming to help out. He hasn't moved his cannons over here yet, so it's going to take a while for him to um, break down the wall. But if he, use, he uses his Sishko's axe, he will be able to take down the Palisade quite quickly. And now I'm actually starting to move back because I didn't feel like I had really the push, I guess. I wanted to collect my troops a little bit. So I'm hoping that I'm just going to set them... Yeah, I'm just going to set them right here. And then we will be attacking Frank from two different directions. Too bad that we can't see the chat. I think it would be interesting to see if we actually communicated this strategy. It might very well have been that Becca just told me to pull back a little bit. Recuperate and re... Um, reposition my troops. If we look at Frank's perspective, we can see that Berkut is starting to rebuild. He does have both of the barracks down and also two town halls. So he will be able to start sending some help. But he is making pikes for whatever reason. And they aren't upgraded so they will not really help out at all. Let's go back to Frank. Yeah. We are cutting down his base quite quickly. But Becca, if we go back to his base, because I think um, we will start seeing a GG pretty soon. I just want to check his base. He went, okay, dwellings, basic stuff. Still only the second upgrade, or the first upgrade rather, on his gold mines. He hasn't gotten a ridiculous amount of gold mine upgrades. A lot of units on food, none on... St okay, because now... Uh, now we can see that they're not working anymore, so they've called the GG, and we have won the day. Two artillery depots, only one upgrade to decrease the cost. He didn't get any of the stone excavation upgrades. He did get all of the food ones, though, the um, field capacity and the wood cutting efficiency. None of... We have one fire rate upgrade, 
don't think that he has any of the uh, firepower upgrades either. So he didn't really put too much economy into firepower. He didn't really have to. But that in is interesting. I don't see anyone in his base working on stone. Rather wood and I guess trading food for stone whenever he needed. And rather going for um, for stables. Yeah, more stables. And uh, haven't gone up to the 18th century yet. Either actually has got the cathedral. But this is interesting to see. It's always important to like... If you play with someone and you think that, damn, this player was really, really good, then save the replay and just try to go through whatever build they did. But when I'm looking at it, it wasn't really, I wasn't that surprised. Three town halls wasn't really anything different than what I'm doing um, regularly, except, of course, he's going with artillery and no upgrades in stone. So that's an interesting step. We might want to transition into stone if it's going to be a longer game. But, I mean, we won the game within 30 minutes of game time and I think like 20 minutes of real time. So that was that. Fun game to play. Didn't really feel like we had too much of a challenge. Most likely because uh, Becca was that good at uh, snuffing out Berkut very, very early. And then I was very, very lucky as well that I wasn't, um, uh, I wasn't attacked by Frank somewhere when I was uh, moving out of my base. But we spread out their focus pretty good. And we also did kind of uni-wall this thing. So thank you, uh, Becca, for being an awesome teammate. Most likely not going to see this video, but still just throwing it out there in the ether. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Have a great day and take care. I will see you in the next one.